Fortnite might be treating my kid's ADHD better than his school does. And I'm the psychiatrist who might have to prove it. He's 10. He zones in for hours. No breaks. Total focus. Homework? Forget it. But Fortnite? Locked in like a Navy SEAL. I used to think this was an addiction. Now I'm wondering if it's self-medication. And if that's true, then everything we've been told about screen time, dopamine, and attention problems, well, it might be completely backwards. So, are screens breaking kids' brains? Or are they the only thing holding them together? And who am I to say Fortnite might be more therapeutic than half the interventions that we're prescribing? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And honestly, at this point, I'm just hoping my kid doesn't start billing me for treatment. <laughs> Dopamine gets a bad rap. Scroll TikTok and you'd think it's this evil brain chemical that screens weaponize to hook kids. But here's the thing. It's not about how much dopamine your brain gets. It's about how your brain handles it. ADHD doesn't come from too much dopamine. It comes from a system that doesn't process it right in the first place. Think of dopamine like a mail service. In ADHD brains, the letters show up late go to the wrong house, or they just get lost. So what looks like screen addiction might actually be self-medication. My own kid zones into Fortnite like it's a mission from NASA. To some people, that looks like a problem. But for a brain that's struggling to focus, the game might be giving it just enough stimulation to stay online. And research backs this up. ADHD brains have lower baseline dopamine in the areas that control attention and impulse control. They need more stimulation just to function like everyone else. That's exactly why we give stimulant meds. They raise dopamine levels, not create addiction, but to normalize function. If screens were truly flooding the brain with dopamine and causing ADHD, then giving kids Adderall would make things worse, right? But it doesn't. It helps. So maybe we've been asking the wrong question. Not are screens creating ADHD, but are screens helping kids with ADHD function better and we just didn't realize it? And if it's not dopamine overload, what is messing with our kids' attention? One study might have the answer. In 2024, researchers ran a study that should have broken the internet. They tracked screen time and attention spans in 326 people, kids, teens, adults, and the results, well, zero correlation. That's right, screen time didn't predict attention problems at all, not even in kids. This punches a hole in everything we've been told. Limit screen hours, protect their brains, ban phones in school, blah, blah, blah. But the data didn't back it up. Some people were on screens 12 hours a day and had the same focus levels as folks who used them half that much. Even the type of screen use didn't change the outcome. TikTok, homework, video games, it didn't matter. So what did matter? Brain wiring. Some kids handle stimulation well, others don't. Two kids, same screen habits, one thrives, the other struggles. It's not about how much screen time, it's about what the brain is doing during that time. Maybe that Fortnite session isn't corrupting your kid's brain. Maybe it's helping it to stay focused. Now, the study wasn't perfect. It relied on self-reports, didn't track sleep, or break down passive versus active use. But still, the core takeaway holds. Screen time, on its own, it's not the villain. So if it's not about duration, what is the thing that actually is messing with our kids' brains? So if screens aren't causing ADHD, does that mean that they're harmless? Not even close. The real danger, it's not screen time, it's screen chaos. Today's teens get 150 notifications a day. They check their phones 85 times on average. That's not just distraction, it's a full-blown attention assault. Every alert yanks the brain into something new. A text, a DM, a game, buzz, repeat. 
and the brain's command center, it's still under construction. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for focus, impulse control, decision making, doesn't fully develop until they're around age 25. Now, picture trying to build a skyscraper while someone keeps stealing your blueprints. That's what constant task switching does to a developing brain. It doesn't just scatter attention, it reshapes the wiring. Networks that are supposed to work together start misfiring. Focus becomes a fight. Even if the phone's off but nearby, the brain stays on edge, just waiting for the next ping. And if your kid already struggles with attention, well, this turns the volume up to 11. ADHD brains are more sensitive to interruption, more vulnerable to overload. It's not the screen itself, it's the pattern. A video call with grandma, that's connection. A strategy game, that's engagement. Scrolling TikTok while texting five people and watching YouTube in the background, that's chaos. The goal isn't to ban screens. It's to help your kid's brain build focus, not train it to chase dopamine every eight seconds. It's easy to panic, easy to feel like I already messed this up. But this isn't about blame. It's about understanding how your kid's brain actually work and helping it thrive. So let's get practical. Forget screen hours. Start focusing on screen patterns. Turn off notifications during homework. Make bedrooms and dinner tables phone-free zones. Avoid infinity scroll apps late at night. Your kid's brain needs time to power down. Create screen sessions with a start and stop time. 20 minutes on, then a real break. Pay attention to what they're watching and playing. Strategy game, story-driven show, or a straight-up dopamine roulette. For kids with attention struggles, structure is everything. You don't need to be perfect, just intentional. ADHD isn't caused by screens, but the wrong habits can make it louder. Think of screens like sugar. A little, fine, but too much in the wrong form at the wrong time, that's when things get messy. So build screen habits that work with your kids' brains, not against it. Be curious, not punitive. And if something feels off, trust your gut. Sometimes it's not too much screen time. Sometimes it's undiagnosed ADHD hiding in plain sight. Talk to your child's doctor. Ask for a full evaluation, one that looks beyond devices and into focus, behavior, and emotional regulation across numerous settings. And if you want to go deeper, especially into what social media is doing to your teens' brain, watch my next video. We're talking TikTok, Instagram, and the mental health impacts no one warned us about. You'll want to see this before your kids scroll again. Until next time, be safe and be well.